As for what follows, for indeed the most truthful of all speeches, the book of Allah and the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evilest of affairs are novelties and religion. For all novelties and religion will lead to innovation. Every innovation will lead to misguidance. And all misguidance will end in a hellfire. O oh Allah, we ask you to show us the truth as the truth and to provide us with the ability to follow it. And to show us falsehood as falsehood and provide us with the ability to avoid it. And O oh Allah, we ask you to keep distant from us fitting trials and tribulations. For only you can protect and keep distant from us trials and tribulations and he made other do supplications that path missed us fali at the fadl mashkura ya shaykhana alhamdulillah alladhi manna alayna bi idrak hadha al-shahr al-mubarak wa nasal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yu'inana ala qiyamihi imanan wa ihtisaba wa ala siyamihi imanan wa ihtisaba وأن يرفع عن هذه الأمة هذه الأمة إنه سميع مجيب الدعوات نعم uh, The Sheikh Hafizahullah continued making dua He said our praise is due to Allah who has bestowed upon us this bounty of me reaching this month of Ramadan and being in this great blessed month of Ramadan and I ask him to aid us in a standing in prayer in it and to establish worship in it. We ask him to aid us and support us in fasting in this month with Iman, with believing in his obligation, and seeking a reward for, from Allah and Allah alone. Now, to Fadl Mashkura. Father Shahr al Mubarak, Mosimun, Min Mawasim al Khairat, Wal Jihadi Fit Ta'at. فإن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يبشر بمقدم هذا الشهر العظيم ويهنئ أصحابه بقدوم هذا الشهر وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم يجتهد في العبادة في هذا الشهر ما لا يجتهد في غيره فقد جاء عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم أخبار وآثار عظيمة تبين شدة حرصه صلى الله عليه وسلم على الاجتهاد والعبادة في هذا الشهر الكريم وهذا الشهر العظيم ولقد قال الله تعالى لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر ولا شك أيها الأحبة أن الإنسان كما هو معلوم عنده وعند الجميع وكما هو من أسس هذا الدين العظيم أن العبادة لا تقبل إلا إذا اشتملت على شرطين الشرط الأول الإخلاص وهو التوحيد الإخلاص لله سبحانه وتعالى أن يكون العمل خالص لله لا تشوب شائبة رياء ولا سمعة والشرط الثاني المتابعة للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حذو القذة بالقذة من غير زيادة ولا نقص فمن أنعم الله عليه بهذين الأمرين العظيمين فإنه يوفق لكل خير. نعم. Uh, the Sheikh Hafidhullah, he went on to say that the, this is the blessed month. This is a blessed month. And it is the season of righteous acts and goodness and doing acts of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and striving hard to achieve what is offered in this month. He says, for this reason, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kana yubashiru bi maqdami hadha shah. He used to give glad tidings of the coming of this month in the beginning of this month, and it'd be right before this month. At the coming of this month, he would give glad tidings of this month. 
so that the people can prepare themselves, in other words, for this month to enter it with striving hard and working hard and, and putting their best effort in servitude and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make ishtihad fi ibad, as he said, to make striving hard in worship in this month. He says, for this reason, you find that we have tremendous narrations, tremendous information and news from the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all that which is indicative to his shidda to hirsi, his severe, intense diligency in this month in striving hard in ibadah that we must imitate and follow. Just as Allah Ta'ala, this is why Allah Ta'ala says about our Prophet, Verily, for you in the Messenger of Allah is an excellent and beautiful example for the one who hopes to meet with Allah in the Yawm Al Akhir and hope for the Day of Judgment. And they remember Allah in abundance. Al Ayah. He says, However, this worship and this servitude and this striving to imitate the Prophet and what he did in this month that we're ordered to do. This is something that must be founded upon the Usus al-Din. It must be based upon the foundations of this religion, the fundamental foundations of this religion. And this foundation of this religion and this worship is based upon two foundational conditions for your worship to be established. The first one is an ikhlas, sincerity to Allah in your actions and deeds. And that is the tawheed. That is the singling out Allah alone for worship. Worship that is performed sincerely seeking a face of Allah with no riyah, with no doing it to be seen of others, nor doing it for sumah to be heard of others, that people can hear your fame to be made of yourself from it. This is this your worship must be free of this and totally done for the sake of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the first foundation fundamental foundation of the deen. He said, the Shaykh Hafizahullah, he went on to say that the second foundation is al-mutaba'ah, congruency to the sunnah of the Prophet, that your actions, your deeds, and your beliefs must be in congruency with what has been legislated from the Messenger of Allah. It must be following of what has come from the Messenger of Allah. Bila ziyada, without adding anything to it extra, nor decreasing anything from it. For your worship must be free of innovation and misguidance. Tafaddu mashkurin ya shaykhana. Wa inna mimma yu'in ala al-ishtihad fi al-ibadah fi hadha al-shahr al-azim awwalan an na'lam anna hadha huwa hadyuhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa hadyu al-sahaba wa hadyu من تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين فإن هدي هؤلاء جميعا الاجتهاد في العبادة في هذا الشهر العظيم والحرص على استغلال كل لحظة وكل دقيقة في هذا الشهر العظيم ومما يعين على الاجتهاد في هذا أن نعرف أن أيام رمضان أيام قليلة وسرعان ما تنقضي كما قال الله تعالى فعدة من أيام أخرى وقال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أيام معدودة وسرعان ما تنقضي ولذلك جاء في الأثر والحديث الصحيح أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال رغم أنف رغم أنف رغم أنف من أدرك رمضان فلم يغفر له فمن أدرك هذه الأيام وهذه الليالي الفاضلة ولم يغفر له فهذا محروم حرمان عظيم جدا ومما يعين على الاجتهاد في العبادة في هذا الشهر العظيم أن نعرف أهمية هذا رمضان وأهمية الصيام والعبادة فيه فقد جاء في الأثر 
أن رجلين أحدهما استشهد قمر رمضان والآخر عاش حتى صام رمضان فرأي أن هذا الذي أدرك رمضان أن هذا الرجل له مزية ودرجة ورفعة على صاحبه فبين النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أن ذلك بسبب إدراكه لهذا الشهر فكفر الذنوب وغفرت وكان ذلك سببا في سبقه إلى الجنة على صاحبه الذي استشهد فشهر رمضان شهر عظيم تصفد فيه مردة الشياطين وتغلق فيه أبواب النيران فلا يفتح منها باب وتفتح فيه أبواب الجنان فلا يغلق منها باب وينادى مناد يا باغي الخير أقبل يا باغي الخير يا باغي الطاعات يا باغي العمل الصالح أقبل ويا باغي الشر أقصر وفي هذا الشهر العظيم عتقاء لله سبحانه وتعالى من النار كل ليلة وكما نعلم أن الصيام له منزلة عظيمة فقد جاء في الحديث القدسي أن الله تعالى يقول كل, ابن كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصوم فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به وما ظنك أيها المسلم إذا علمت أن الله سبحانه وتعالى هو الذي سوف يجزيك وهو الذي سوف يعظم لك الأجر والله عظيم وجليل وكريم وغني وسائر أسمائه وصفاته سبحانه وتعالى تدل على عظمة جائزته إلا الصوم فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به يدع طعامه وشرابه من أجلي وشهوته من أجلي نعم جزاكم الله خيرا uh, The Sheikh Hafizahu Allah went on to say that from amongst the things that will aid upon striving hard in this month and being able to for us to be able to strive hard and achieve what need to be achieved in this month first and foremost is realizing that that was the guidance of the messenger of Allah that he strove hard in this month, realizing that this was the guidance and way of the Sahaba, the companions of the Messenger of Allah. And this was the way and the guidance when Mutabi'un, those who followed them to the Day of Judgment, to Yom al Qiyamah, they imitate this characteristics, this guidance of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So for that reason, we should put hirs, diligence, to take advantage, to strive hard in every lahza, in every moment of this time of the month of Ramadan, in every daqiqa, in every minute, in every heen and wahan, in every moment, a periods of time. Do not let any of it escape you to take advantage. Why? He says, because the days of this month is qalila. Ayamuhu qalila. His days are few. Sur'ana yazhab. Quickly will it dissipate and go away, he says, and leave us, as Allah Ta'ala has described in informing us of informing us of this reality when he said, It is a limited, enumerated amount of days that this month is. So quickly will it dissipate, quickly will it go away. So take advantage of this time so as not to have no regret. And also because Allah Ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, Ya you haladina am, O you who believe, Kutiba alaykum siyam has been prescribed upon you fasting, Kema kutib aladina min kabalikum, as it has been prescribed on those who came before you. He says, All of this is indicative that this, this shows what helps you in striving hard to take advantage of this month, realizing the short period of time 
and all that you can achieve in it, which can only be achieved in this month. He says also from amongst the things that will aid and assist in taking advantage of this month and taking advantage of this opportunity that will aid you is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he mentioned that in spite of the nose of the son of Adam, that he, in spite the nose of the son of Adam, that he enters this month of Ramadan and he leaves from it, la yugfarullah, and he is not forgiven. And he is not forgiven. There's no forgiveness granted to him. Meaning he didn't achieve his earning forgiveness because he didn't strive hard. He said also from amongst the things that will assist and aid us in striving hard in his month is knowing the value and the status of the month of Ramadan and the importance of this month in the life of the believer and his Iman. He says, from amongst the things that's indicative to this is the hadith of the two men who had accepted Islam from Baba'a, from a place area near Medina. They both had accepted Islam at the same time with the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one was Tushhida. He was he died as a martyr. One died in the battle as a martyr. And the other one lived, the other companion who accepted Islam together, the other companion lived one extra year. One extra year longer than the one who died a year before as a martyr. And the one who died a year later, I mean, who, he, the one who died or lived a year longer, died that year uh, later that one of the companions had saw him in a dream that he proceeded to entering the gates of paradise before the one who died as a martyr. And so he thought this was strange and went to the messenger and the messenger of Allah clarified that the reason behind that was because the one who lived a year longer reach the month of Ramadan because he reached the month of Ramadan and achieve what is to be achieved in that month. So that just shows you or shows us the importance of this month in the, in the area of your hereafter and what you may achieve in it. For this reason, we should take advantage of this month. He says, because an individual can be deprived of reaching this month of Ramadan like that individual was and lose on all of those extra opportunities to have an everlasting reward in the hereafter. So because of this individual man reached the month of Ramadan and fast a whole nother month of Ramadan more than the man before him, he preceded him to the paradise. He says, this is the month of the reasons that help aid that shows the value of this month, aid you in striving hard in it, is that all of the doors of hell have been locked up, have been closed and tightly shut, impossible to open, and not one of them is open. And all of the gates of paradise are open, completely wide open, and not any of them are closed. And there's a caller at the doors of each of these gates saying, O oh, seeker of good, come forward with the good. In other words, this is the time to bring forth that good. Come with your good now. Strive hard now. And, and, and he's saying, O oh, seeker of evil and wrongdoing, refrain and desist from your wrongdoing. For, the, and, uh, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the messenger has informed us every night of Ramadan, lillahi utaqa'u min an that there are those who Allah Ta'ala is freeing from the hellfire every night of Ramadan, every night of Ramadan because of this striving. Understand the things that will aid in a sister Sheikh said is understanding the stat, the tremendous status of fasting in this month and the reward you get for it. And that was ind indicated in the hadith al Qudsi where the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kullu amil ibn Adam, every one of the deeds of the sons of Adam is for him. Illa siyam, except for fasting. 
فَهُوَ لِي It is for me وَأَنَا أَجِزِي بِي And I'm going to reward him for it. He said here, this shows the status, tremendous status of this month of Ramadan. It shows that the reward that one will achieve for that fasting in this month and adherence to obedience to Allah in this month has a reward that only Allah knows the greatness of it. And he said the deeds that we do already, the reward is understood that, and it's for yourself. But the fasting is totally for Allah. It's totally for Allah. So Allah is going to give you a special reward for it. هذا فليتفضل المشكور يا شيخنا. هذا الشهر العظيم له خصائص عظيمة لا يعلمها إلا الله. فإن أجر الصائم عظيم. كما جاء في الحديث القدسي كل عمل ابن آدم له إلا الصوم فإنه لي وأنا زيب كما أن الصيام يشفع لعبد يوم القيامة حتى يدخله الجنة وكما علمنا أيضا أن الصيام خصص له باب في الجنة يقال له باب الريان لا يدخله إلا الصائمون وهو شهر العتق من النار وهو شهر المغفرة للذنوب والخطايا لمن صامه إيمانا واحتسابا ومن قامه إيمانا واحتسابا فيؤثر له ما تقدم من ذنبه وهو شهر تفتح فيه أبواب الجنة وتغلق فيه أبواب النيران وتصفد فيه مرادة الشياطين وللداء للصائم دعوة يستجاب لها فالله سبحانه وتعالى يستجيب دعوة الصائم وللصائم فرحتان فرحة عند فطره وفرحة عند لقاء ربه وخلوف فم الصائم أطيب عند الله من ريح المسك والملائكة تستغفر للصائمين ويزين الله سبحانه وتعالى جنته كل يوم ويقول يوشك عبادي الصالحون أن يلقوا عنهم المؤونة والأذى ثم يصير إليك وفي هذا الشهر العظيم ليلة عظيمة هي خير من ألف كما قال الله تعالى إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر فليلة القدر ليلة عظيم خير من ألف شهر فالعمل فيها وقيامها إيمانا واحتسابا يغفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه وشهر رمضان هو شهر القرآن كما قال الله تعالى شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان شهر رمضان هو أيضا شهر للفتوح الإسلامية فأول وأعظم فتح على وجه الأرض هو فتح مكة وبهذا الفتح انتشر الإسلام وقوي وبقي وثبت إلى أن تقوم الساعة كما قال الله تعالى إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح وقد كان في شهر رمضان فشهر رمضان شهر الخير والبركة فالبركة في الصيام بركة عظيمة 
فلا يفهم من ذلك كما يفهم بعض الناس أن الصوم وقت للكسل بل هو وقت للنشاط والجد والاجتهاد والعمل والطاعة وهذا مما يبين لنا أهمية الاجتهاد في هذا الشهر والحرص على كل لحظة من لحظاته وكل ثانية فنشغلها في طاعة الله من ليل ونهار نعم نعم uh, <coughs> The Sheikh Hafizah Allah He went on to mention that this tremendous month or this month is tremendous it is magnificent it is Aween and it has Khasa is Aweema it has amazing and tremendous characteristic. La ya'lamuha illallah. No one knows it except Allah. Truly. Knows the specialties and special qualities of this tremendous month except Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we indicated with the last hadith he ended with was every action of a deed of the son of Adam is for himself except for fasting. It is for me, and I will specifically reward him for it. And he mentioned, he went on thereafter to describe many of his characteristics of fasting in the month of Ramadan. Number one, he says, fasting is an intercessor. It will intercede. It will make shafa'a for the one who, who fasts because of that individual leaving off his food and his drink and his desires that that individual, that fasting will intercede on his behalf as the Messenger of Allah said, the Quran and the fasting will intercede on behalf of the its companion or the one who did who practiced them. Likewise, he said of his distinctive qualities is that the fasting in this month is that there's a specific door in paradise called Ar-Rayyan. And no one will enter this door except those who are fat, who fasted, who fast. And they will be called the fasting people and they will enter. Then this door will be closed and no one will ever enter it again. So only Allah knows what's in this door of reward. That's what we mean. Only Allah knows its specific qualities and how great distinctive qualities that it has. And then the Sheikh Hafizahullah. He went on to continue to describe further khasais or khasisa characteristics of this month that is specific to it. He said of it is it is the month of al-itq, of being freed from the hellfire. It is the month of maghfira, of earning forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, man qamahu, that whoever stands in this night or stand in the nights and praying and worship, of Ramadan, will be forgiven for him what preceded of his sins. He said, whoever fast in this month, the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Man saw, whoever fast in this month will be forgiven for him what is preceded of his sins. Whoever stands in prayer in this month will be forgiven what is preceded of his sins, and so on and so forth. And the shaykh says of his distinctive qualities is that to fetah Abu Abu Jannah wa to wa or to that he said all of the gates of paradise will be open and all of the gates of hell is closed or to suffer and all of the all of the uh, most mischievous and evil spreaders the worst in spreading evil from amongst the devils will be featured <coughs> will be chained up from its virtue is that the da'wah to sa'im yustajabu lah that zaha that the supplication of the fasting person is answered it is responded to from his virtue that he mentioned is that for the fasting person he has two times he rejoice in this life he rejoices as the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said he rejoices at the time when he breaks his fast. He rejoices that he completed this obligation, this servitude to Allah with faith in his legislation and believing 
and seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So because of this, he rejoices. He's happy. He enjoys. He rejoices and he's happy and enjoys this time. He says the second time is Rabbi, is when he meets his Lord for his patience upon obedience and staying away from disobedience. That when he meets his Lord, finally he rejoices. Also from his distinctive quality is that the breath of the fasting person to Allah smells like the oil musk. It smells like the oil musk in Arabic misk. It smells like the oil musk. As the messenger clarified that the khuluf, the khuluf, the, the open space um, cavity of the mouth and the throat uh, to the chest of the believer has the smell of musk, of the fasting person has the smell of musk with Allah, of the virtues and of his distinctive qualities that he mentioned is that it is the month in which comes in it, Laylatul Qadr, the night of pre of decreeing, which is better than a thousand months, which is better than a thousand months. With me, the translator is equivalent to 83 years and some odd months. That one day of worship, of servitude, of obedience, that night of decreeing that takes place in the night of Ramadan, that that is equivalent to a thousand months, which again is of 83 years and some months. And he Sheikh then quoted the ayat of Allah, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Verily, we revealed it, yani al-Qur'an, meaning the Qur'an, we revealed it in the night of the creed, meaning the whole Qur'an. And Allah Ta'ala says, is khayru min alfi shahr. It is better than a thousand months, meaning of worship and servitude, is better than it. Of the distinctive characteristics of this month, it is the shahrul Qur'an, he said. He said it is the month of the Qur'an. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. It is the month of the Quran and embarking into the book of Allah. As Allah says, Shahru Ramadan al-Ladi unzila fihi al-Quran, huda lil-nasi wa bayinat min al-huda wal-furqan. The Shaykh quoted the ayah that Allah Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah that the month of Ramadan in which was revealed in it the Quran, the recital, the book of Allah was revealed in it as a guidance for mankind and a clarification of guidance and a criteria for what is right and what's wrong. So this month, al ayah. So this month, this month is the month of the book of Allah embarking upon reciting the Quran, the Arabic Quran, reciting it with your tongue and re re reflecting over his meaning with your heart. And he mentioned, also from the distinctive qualities of this month is the Shahr al-Fatuh al It is the month of Islamic conquest where victory came to the Muslims in this month, more so than outside of this month. He said the victories in the battlefield came to the Muslims in this month. He says the first conquest that the Muslim made was Fatuh al was the conquest of Mecca. As Allah Ta'ala says, and when comes the victory of Allah and the conquest. And this was the first al ayah. He says, and this was the first conquest of the Muslims, was the con conquest and of Mecca. Of Mecca. He says, these are indicative all to the better katusiyan, the blessing of fasting. And that many people tend to think, as the scholars have mentioned, that individuals will think that siyam, when you fast and enter the da'af, you're in weakness. But really, the ulama, the scholars have explained, this fasting is the month of giving you zil, nashat, ijtihad, striving hard, having vigor, putting strong efforts forward in this month at every moment. And not being lazy. It's not the fasting shouldn't make you lazy. It should make you strive harder to earn these aspects of ibadat, of worship. Laylan wa nahara, he said. Night and day. Tafaddu mashkura. Labudda min istighlalihi 
وعماره طاعه الله سبحانه وتعالى بصنوف عظيمه من صنوف الخير التي دلت عليها الاثار من كتاب الله وسنه رسوله واهمها الصوم وقيامه وكذلك الصدقه والاكثار من البذل واطعام الطعام وتفقد المحتاجين ومن اهم ذلك ايضا قراءه القران فشهر رمضان شهر القران فللسلف في هذا صور عظيمه حتى انه حكي عن الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى انه كان يختم في رمضان ستين ختمه والجلوس في بيوت الله وعمارتها بالعلم وقراءة القرآن وتفقد أحوال المسلمين فالمساجد أثرها عظيم والجلوس فيها مع حفظ الإنسان لجلوسه فيها من الغيبة والنميمة أو العبث بالأجهزة الجوالات وغيرها لها أثر عظيم ولذلك شرع في هذا الشهر الاعتكاف وكان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قد اعتكف اعتكف العشر الأوائل من شهر رمضان فقيل له إنها أمامك فاعتكف العشر الأواسط فقيل إنها أمامك فاعتكف العشر الأواسط وما زال يعتكفها حتى توفه الله ولما شغل عنها ولعله في عام الفتح اعتكفها في شوال صلى الله عليه وسلم كما أن مما يعمر به هذا الشهر العظيم العمرة فقد ورد فيها فضل العظيم وكذلك الإكثار من ذكر الله والدعاء والتضرع والاستغفار وبر الوالدين وصلة الأرحام ونصرة المسلمين وتفقد أحوالهم وكل هذه الأمور فيها أدلة عظيمة جدا لا يسعى المقام لذكرها فالصوم كما ورد فيه من الفضل من الأحاديث التي مرت علينا ومنه قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم الصوم جنة فإذا كان صوم أحدكم فلا يرفث ولا يفسق ولا يجهل فإن سابه أحد فليقل إني امرئ صائم وهذا مما يبين لنا أيها الأحبة أن الصوم تهذيب للنفوس وتربية على سمو الروح الإنسانية إلى أعلى الأخلاق وأعلى المثل فتكون صورة المسلم صورة عظيمة جدا من الأخلاق ومن سمو الروح حتى أنه في هذا الموقف العظيم يساب ويشتم ويعتدى عليه فيقول إني مرئ صائم وفي قوله تعالى لعلكم تتقون أيضا بيان لهذا المقصد العظيم أن الصيام تهذيب للنفوس وفي فضل القيام أيضا ما ورد في الأحاديث التي ذكرنا منها وفيها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قام مع إمامه حتى ينصرف كتب له قيام ليلة والصدقة فإن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان أجود الناس وكان أجود ما يكون في رمضان حينما يدارسه جبريل عليه الصلاة والسلام القرآن كما ورد في الحديث وورد أيضا أنه قال صلى الله عليه وسلم أفضل الصدقة صدقة رمضان صدقة رمضان أفضل الصدقات فيحرص المسلم على الصدقة الواجبة والمستحبة وإطعام الطعام وتفقد المحاويج فلقد كان السلف حريصين على هذه الصور العظيمة يطعمون الطعام على حبه 
مسكينا ويتيما واسيرا انما نطعمكم لوجه الله لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا بل انهم كان الرجل منهم لا يطعم طعام افطاره الا ومعه مساكين كما اثر عن ابن عمر رضي الله عنه ويدعو مساكين المسجد ومساكين المدينه الى طعامه وكان اذا منع اهله بعض المساكين اخذ طعامه واعطاه اياهم او امتنع عن الطعام تلك اليوم تفطير الصائم ايضا من البذل والصدقه قد جاء في الحديث من فطر صائما كان له مثل اجره ولو كان التفطير على شيء يسير من فطر صائما كان مغفرة لذنوبه وعتق رقبته من النار وكان له مثل أجره هذا الشهر أيضا يجتهد فيه بقراءة القرآن كما كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يجتهد فيه ويدارس المدارسة بين الإخوان في القرآن واجبة ومستحبة فيعلم منا من يحسن القراءة يعلم من لا يحسن ونتدارس القرآن ونعرف معانيه وتفسيره فقد قال صلى الله عليه وسلم كما ورد أنه يدارسه جبريل القرآن وكان السلف رضوان الله عليهم إذا دخل رمضان قطعوا جميع الأعمال لقراءة القرآن حتى أنهم منهم من يختم في اليوم مرتين ومنهم من يختم في اليوم مرة أو في يومين مرة وهكذا وقراءة القرآن تكون بتدبر وتأمل كما قرأ أبو موسى رضي الله عنه على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فسمع لصدره أزيز كأزيز المرجل من البكاء صلى الله عليه وسلم فتأمل القرآن وقراءة عبد الله بن مسعود أيضا عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فوجده يبكي لما قرأ عليه قوله من صورة النساء فكيف إذا جئنا من كل أمة بشهيد وجئنا بك على هؤلاء شهيدا فتأمل القرآن وتدبره والعمل بمقتضاه له أثر عظيم في هذا الشهر و الاعتكاف ايضا له اثر عظيم وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم لم يترك الاعتكاف في رمضان وبين فضله واهميته بما فيه من زياده الايمان والخلو مع مع الله سبحانه وتعالى وتدبر الانسان لحاله ولذلك امر الله بتطهير بيته وهذا يشمل جميع بيوت الله وطاهر بيته للطائفين والعاكفين والطواف خاص بمكة لكن الاعتكاف في كل المساجد فعلينا أن نحرص على الاجتهاد في هذه العبادة في هذه هذا الشهر العظيم نعم جزاكم الله خير يا شيخ الشيخ لو سمحت الحديث ذكرت عن بكاء النبي ما أذكر ذلك مرة أخرى نعم عند كراءة كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مر على عبد الله بن مسعود فقال له اقرا عليك قال اقرا عليك وعليك انزل قال اني احب ان اسمعه من غيري فقرا عليه من صوره النساء حتى بلى قوله تعالى فكيف اذا جئنا من كل امه بشهيد وجئنا بك على هؤلاء شهيدا فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم حسبك قال ابن مسعود فالتفت الي فاذ عيناه تذرفان يعني كان يبكي صلى الله عليه وسلم نعم نعم جزاكم الله خيرا. The Sheikh حفظه الله may Allah preserve our علماء and may Allah cause us to learn from our scholars. Their kalam is so much benefit. الله أكبر. From there he said, how we take advantage that is incumbent that we take advantage of the opportunities in immersing ourselves in obedience to Allah and obedience to His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. And immersing ourselves in 
striving hard in that itself, realizing that is something that I must strive hard in this month, in every moment, and every time, night and day. He said, from amongst the aspects of ibadat or of ta'at, of obedience, that must be embarked upon, the most important of them, the most important of them he enumerates. He says the most important of them, number one, is your fasting. Number two is standing and praying. Number three is giving sadaqah, is giving charity. Number four, ta'am, feeding your food. Number, number five, he mentioned, trying to help the poor Muslims and looking at their conditions and trying to seek them out and the system and what you're able to assist them in. He mentioned also reciting of the Quran in abundancy, the Arabic Quran, because the Quran is only in Arabic, reciting the Quran. He said Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala was narrated that he had did 60 khatma, 60 completions of reading the Quran, 60 in the month of Ramadan. And he said, busy yourself with knowledge, learning the meanings of the Quran, learning, seeking knowledge on some level or degree. And then he went back on the point of reciting of the Quran, the reciting of the Quran and embarking upon that. And he said, also take advantage of being in the masajid as much as you can and staying away from your cell phones and staying away from uh, social media. He says, because of what is on there of much ghiba wa namima, of backbiting and tail carrying and spreading things about people that, that may be true and they don't want to be said or to cause trials and tribulations between individuals, but using the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a tremendous place to perform acts of worship and read your Quran and study the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Shaykh Hafidhullah, he mentions also the that led him to the point of what is done in this month, in the last 10 days, or in this month period of an i'tikaf, of um, devoting oneself to the houses of Allah and not leaving them and doing i'tikaf, spending the night and days in the masjid engulfed in ibadah and getting closer to Allah. He said, these are from amongst the things that has come to be done in this month. He says also from amongst the affairs that is done in this month is al-umrah, acts of obedience, making umrah in, in this month from the, that which has come in this area of making umrah of the tremendous reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making umrah in this month. He says also busying oneself with the dhikr of Allah with remembrance of Allah, busying yourself with supplication, dua to Allah, busying yourself with tadarru, humbling yourself in the presence and viewing in sight of Allah and hearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, humbling yourself, making al istighfar, asking for forgiveness from Allah in this month, doing acts of obedience, increasing in it like birr walidain, being dutiful and good compartment and treatment towards their parents taking advantage of that righteous deed in this month. In other words, also looking at the conditions and state of the Muslims and seeing what part you can play in aiding them and supporting them, being one who strives hard in this month. These are nothing more than examples of that reality. From a, so fasting was the first one he mentioned. He says the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about fasting. He said, As-Sawmu Junnah that fasting is a shield, it is a protection, like a shield is a protection from the enemy and their weapons. Fasting is a shield from sins and disobedience and Allah's wrath. He said, fasting is a shield. And he said, if any one of you is fasting, then let him not say foul speech and let him not argue and yell. Let him not argue and yell. And if anyone insults him and attacks his honor, let him say, that I am a fasting person. He says, so for this reason, what this shows us is that the Surah to Muslim, the image of the Muslim is the image of nobility and character and noble character. 
and that this month, this hadith shows us that if he's yushtem wa yusab, that if he's insulted or attacked, that he be patient and say, I'm a fasting person. So this teaches us what? Tahdibun lin nafus. That fasting is nothing more than a disciplinary and a, a disciplinarian for the soul, to discipline the soul, the desires and oneself, to put help put oneself into check and put oneself into organ be, being one who that is structured and controlled, the controlling of self of self-control. This is the virtues of fasting because the person say, and I thought I'm fasting, I'm fasting. So fasting disciplines the soul. He said also from this is that of the acts of obedience is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Man qama ma'al imam, that whoever stands praying behind the imam in the masjid, husiba aw kutiba lahu qiyam al layla, that will be written for him. I mean, if he stays with the imam until the imam yan saraf completes the prayer, whoever prays with the imam until he completes the prayer, this is the condition. The Prophet is mentioned. This is a conditional sentence from the translator. That whoever stands and prays with the Imam until he completes the prayer, it will be written for him as if he prayed, that he prayed, it will be written for him that he prayed the whole night. It will be written for him that he prayed the whole night. And then the Sheikh says, also from amongst the acts of obedience that must be strove, strove, strove for, he mentioned before, is Sadaqah, giving charity, giving donations, spending your wealth. He says, this act was how the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, as was indicative or was indicated this reality in the hadith of the prophet when Ibn Abbas said that the messenger of Allah was the ajwad nas He was the kana ajwad nas He was the most generous of the people. And the most generous in doing good and charity, charitable things was in Ramadan. He was. That was his most generosity. Cain. He was the most generous of the people. And his he was most generous himself in the month of Ramadan. And so his Sheikh says, from that is giving sadaq, is giving charity, especially in his month. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Afdalu Sadaqah, that the best charity is the Sadaqah that's given in Ramadan. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this. And he also said that giving Sadaqah is the best form and have the greatest reward in the month of Ramadan. And he said also from amongst the acts of obedience that must be strove upon is is feeding food to the believers, is feeding food to the believers. And he said, this is indicated from, in a statement of Allah, in Surah Al-Insan, وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا And they, Allah described the believers, that they feed the food upon they feed their they feed their food out of love for the poor, for the orphans, and for the captives in war. He says so. The believer he feeds his food in this month, especially because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned men fattara sa'iman that whoever feed the fasting person when he breaks his fast. <clears throat> then this is forgiveness of for all his sins. This is forgiveness for his sins. For this is the time to strive hard. This is the time to put the effort out. More than you have done outside of this month, brothers and sisters in Islam. And then the Sheikh went back to the point of Kira'atul Quran, the reciting of the Quran in this month. He said the importance of reciting the book of Allah is paramount in this month for this being the month of the Quran. He says that studying the book, reciting the Arabic Quran, because the Quran is only in Arabic, reciting the Quran and studying its explanation, which is in our situation, reading it in English is like reading tafsir. 
explanation. So reciting the Quran in Arabic, reading its explanation, pondering over its meaning, as this was what took place with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he studied the Quran with Jibreel alayhi wa alayhi, alayhi ma salatu wa salam. Upon the both of them is praise and peace from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That Jibreel studied the Quran with the Messenger of Allah. And, like, and in his last time of his death, he would do this every Ramadan. Do the whole Quran with every night of Ramadan with study it with the Messenger of Allah. And in the last year of his life, he studied it. He went over with him twice. He says, for this reason, you find that the Salaf, that they, our righteous predecessors, they would cut off their jobs. They will take leave of absence or leave off their businesses and stop their working and their actions of educating like this. And they will focus on the Quran. He says here, like doing two, some of them, he said, would do khatmataini fiyo. They would do two readings of the Quran, some of them, in one night. They would finish reading the whole Quran in one night, twice, cover to cover. Some of them. The Messenger of Allah used to, but they would do this also. He said it's important to ponder and reflect over the Quran. He says this is what indicate that was what was narrated about to, about the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that in he would be heard crying when leading the prayer and making that that buzzing sound like an animal. He would hear that coming from his voice from crying from the Quran as, as a result of pondering over it. And he said likewise he would like the Quran we should get the Quran recited to us have others recite the Quran to us or listen to the Quran be recited for the Messenger of Allah. He used to have others recite the Quran to him as he did with Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He requested for him to recite to him Surah uh, the Quran. So Ibn Mas'ud had recited Surah to nisa He recited Surah to nisa the short chapter number four, which is the chapter called The Women. That when, uh, he recited it from the beginning. And when he arrived, Jibreel, I mean, excuse me, when Ibn Mas'udin arrived to Ayah, verse number 41, where Allah Ta'ala says, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَأُولَاءِ شَهِيدًا Allah Ta'ala says, how will be the case when, when, when Mas'ud, Ibn Mas'udin arrived at this verse? Which means, and how will be the case when we, Allah saying, when we will bring forth from every nation a witness, a shaheed, a witness, and we will bring you, Muhammad, we will bring you uh, over everyone as a witness. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he heard this ayah from Ibn, the mouth of Ibn Mas'ud, and he said, Hasbuk. He said, has book. He said, stop, stop. And Ibn Mas'ud then looked up at the messenger of Allah and he saw tears dropping from his eyes because of this reality of him and us on Yawm al will take place Yawm al And so the Sheikh then ended this point with saying or ended this portion of his presentation is the importance of doing i'tikaf and busying ourselves with the house and clinging to the house of Allah, spending the night and freeing ourselves from our worldly distractions if possible. Faliyat al-fadlu mashkurin ya shaykhana. Tafadla. Ay shaykhana, ka'annakum antum ala al-samit. صوتكم صوت الجهاز مغلق الشيخنا الكريم تشغلون الصوت نعم ما في صوت والآن أيوة نعم أيوة أنت مسموع نعم مما يعين الإنسان على الاجتهاد في العبادة في هذا الشهر العظيم أن يتدبر أحوال السلف 
رضوان الله عليهم اجتهادهم في طاعة الله في هذا الشهر المبارك وإمامهم رسولنا صلى الله عليه وسلم كيف كان يجتهد في رمضان ما لا يجتهد في غيره من الشهور فإنه إذا دخل العشر شد المئزر وأيقظ أهله واعتزل النساء وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم يقوم حتى تتفطر قدماه أي تتشقق حتى أن زوجه عائشة تقول له ألم يغفر الله لك ما تقدم من ذنبك وتأخر فقال أفلا أكون عبدا شكورا فيعلم صلى الله عليه وسلم أن من الله عليه بمغفرة الذنوب تجعله يزيد من الشكر والطاعة فما بالك بنا نحن نسأل الله التوبة والعافية ممن عندنا ذنوب كثيرة وأخطاء وكذلك حال السلف الصالح من أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من اجتهادهم في الطاعة فإن الرجل منهم إذا دخل رمضان حتى لو قيل له إنك تموت غدا لم يزد على ما هو عليه من الطاعة يعني لو علم أن موته غدا ما زاد على ما هو عليه من شدة زيادتها فكانوا يقطعون الدروس مع أن الدروس لها فضل عظيم ليشتغلوا بالقرآن ويشتغلوا بالعبادة ويقبل على القرآن فإذا دخل رمضان تفرغوا لقراءة القرآن وللصلاة وللذكر وزيادة العمل الصالح ولهم مع القرآن العظيم صور عظيمة من البكاء والخشية والختم من القرآن فهذا محمد بن إسماعيل البخاري رحمه الله تعالى كان يختم كل يوم ويقوم بصلاة الليل وربما ختم في الليلتين أو الثلاث يصلي الليلة كله وهذا سعيد بن جبير رضي الله عنه كان يختم كل ليلتين وهكذا حالهم كما ذكر عن الشافعي أنه ختم القرآن ستين ختمة بل حتى ملوكهم فهذا الوليد بن الملك مع أنه خليفة المسلمين كان يختم في كل ثلاثة يعني كل ثلاث ليالي يقوم الليل ويختم القرآن الكريم ولو أردنا أن نتدبر أحوالهم لوجدنا العجب العجاب من حرصهم على قراءة القرآن وتدبره وتأمله وحرصهم أيضا على الكرم والجود والنفقة في رمضان فكان عبد الله بن عمر لا يفطر حتى يأتي بجميع مساكين المسجد أو الحارة ويفطر معه وكان غيره من السلف أيضا يجتهدون في الطاعة والبذل في رمضان فهو رمضان شهر الصدقة وشهر البذل ولعل في صوم الإنسان وإحساسه بالجوع ما يجعله يحس بما يحس به إخوة له من أهل الإسلام 
فيؤدي ذلك إلى اجتهاده في البذل وإطعام الطعام فقد قال عمر رضي الله عنه ليس الصيام من الطعام والشراب وحده ولكنه أيضا الصيام عن الكذب والغيبة والباطل واللهو وهذا يؤيد ما جاء في الحديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال من لم يدع قول الزور والعمل به فليس لله حاجة في أن يدع طعامه وشراب وهذا مما يبين أن أهمية الصيام والمقصد العظيم من الصيام أنه تهذيب للنفوس وتربية لها وعمارة لها بطاعة الله ف كون الإنسان يصوم عن الطعام والشراب ولكن لا يصوم سمعه عن الغيبة والنميمة والغنى والموسيقى وغيرها من المحرمات ولا يصوم بصره عن النظر إلى الصور الخليعة أو الأفلام الماجنة أو النساء المتبرجات في الشوارع أو غير ذلك ولا تصوم جوارحه أيضا عن المحرمات فرجه وفمه وبطنه وهكذا سائر الجوارح فالصيام تهذيب وعلته عظيمة العلة هي التقوى لعلكم تتقون ولذلك هذا الحديث لو تأمله المسلم لعرف ما الهدف من الصيام؟ ليس الهدف من الصيام تعذيب النفس أو الجوع والعطش إنما الهدف والمقصد الأعظم التقوى والقرب إلى الله فكيف ولذلك هنا نقطة مهمة أننا نرى في هذا الشهر وهذه ربما في بلادنا أكثر بلاد الإسلامية أن أصحاب الفسوق يستغلون هذا الشهر موسم لإفساد العبادة على الناس في الأفلام الهابطة والتي فيها استهزاء بالدين أسأل الله السلام والعافية وفيها إشغال للناس بتفاهات عن العبادة والطاعة عند فطرهم أو في سهرهم بالليل وكذلك أهل التجارة يستغلون هذا الشهر لتجارتهم مما يشغل بنات المسلمين ونساء المسلمين بل وربما أيضا حتى كثير من الناس يصير همهم النزول للأسواق والشراء وغيرها وهذا غلط المفروض أن هذا الشهر كما أن صف مرضة الشياطين صفدت أن أيضا أن نصفد مرضة الإنس الشياطين من الإنس حتى لا يفسد علينا شهرنا وعبادتنا وطاعتنا فشهر رمضان شهر الاجتهاد والطاعة وسلفنا الصالح كانوا يجتهدون بالصوم ويفرحون به فرحا عظيما فكان عمر إذا أقبل رمضان قال مرحبا بشهر يطهرنا من الذنوب والخطايا وكان علي يقول من كان همه ما يدخل إلى جوفه كانت قيمته ما يخرج منه فنجد أن السلف اجتهدوا في هذا الشهر فضبطوا جوارحهم وضبطوا أسماعهم وأبصارهم وعرفوا الهدف من مشروعية هذا الصوت واجتهدوا في البذل والإحسان والبكاء بين يدي الله والاقتراح بين يديه سبحانه وتعالى وصور بذلهم لا تعد ولا تحصى فنسأل الله أن يوفقنا وإياكم للشهاد في هذا الشهر وأن نعمره بطاعة الله اجعلنا واياكم من المقبولين اللهم امين نعم قبل ان اترجم لابد ان 
تبين لو سمحت شيئين ذكرت ذكرتهما الاول ما هو قول العلي آه يعني نص كلام علي يا ايوه يعني الانسان اذا كان يشتغل بهم بطنه يعني اهم شيء عنده الاكل وكذا في رمضان فهذا انسان قيمته قيمه يعني كرمكم الله ما يخرج منه ليس له ذي قيمه <تصفيق> اي نعم فما يخرج منه <تصفيق> نعم الامر الثاني الامر الثاني من هو الملك الذي كان يختم القران ذكرت ما ما الخليفه الوليد بن عبد الملك او وليد عبد الملك شكرا <تصفيق> كم كم مره يختم في ثلاثه ايام اي نعم ايوه ايوه جزاك الله خيرا هذا آه الشيخ الحقيقه حبيب. السلف لهم يعني حكايات كثيره بس لا يسع مثل هذا المقام لذكرها من اجتهادهم في الطاعه نعم ويكفي نعم. ان نعرف النصوص التي وردت في القران والسنه في اهميه اجتهادنا في البذل والطاعه في هذا الشهر المبارك نعم نعم جزاكم الله خير يا شيخنا زادك الله حرصا على الطاعه ونشر الدين ويوفقك امين واياكم واياكم امين آه بسم الله طيب نختم الدرس انتم تترجمون وانا انصرف اه زاهد اجيب اجيب سؤاله يا زاهد آه طيب شيخنا حفظكم الله يعني آه هل عندكم شيء من الوقت للاسئله حفظكم الله؟ آه والله الان انا عندي ارتباط والترجمه تتاخذ لها ربع ساعه كده. صحيح صحيح اذا صحيح. سمحتوا لي فحسن لان اخذنا وقت طويل طبعاً عليكم طبعا و... نشكركم شيخنا نشكركم جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيكم تحياتي للاخوان اللي عندكم واسال الله ان يوفقنا واياكم لما يحب ويرضى بارك الله فيك امين امين جزاكم الله خير لهذه الفرصه حياكم الله امين حياكم الله جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته شيخ السلام عليكم السلام وعليكم السلام 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 <laughs> he said, Hafidahullah, from amongst the things that will aid us upon striving hard in this mm-hmm. month is us considering, take consideration and reflection on the condition and state of the Salaf in Ramadan and how they strove hard in this month. And know that the leader of them was the Prophet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As was narrated from about him that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he used to shut the mizara. He would tie his izar, meaning avoid being intimate with his wives in the night. And then when the last 10 nights would enter, it was narrated that he would shut the mizara, that he would tie his 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 um izar, meaning be stay away from his wives intimate in the last 10 day night. And, and he would wake up his family and he would strive hard. He will stay up the whole night like this. He said, for this reason, our mother, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she had asked the messenger of Allah when she saw him striving hard in this manner. As if to her, you striving like a person that don't know that they're not been forgiven. And so she asked the prophet as she thought. She said, oh, Messenger of Allah, has not you been forgiven? Have you not been forgiven what, what will proceed of you of sins? He said, should I not be a, a grateful slave to Allah? Should I not be a grateful slave to Allah? This was the messenger, the one who was forgiven, the one who was pardoned. And we who have not been granted that should be doing this even more. For the prophet, he said, this, what we should strive is since we earn sins and many of them that we should strive our best to be like the messenger of Allah in this month to get our sins forgiven. And when the Sheikh said this, he began to make dua for us. He made dua for us that Allah forgive us and pardon us from our sins and help raise us from our sins. He says, because of this reality that here the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam strove hard like a person who don't know his case, Yomu Qiyamah, and he knew his case. 
And yet he strove hard to show gratitude for being given that case of forgiveness of what proceeded of his sin. The Sheikh went on to say that the Salaf, being that that wasn't granted to them in this fashion, they will strive hard to such an extent that if one of them, it was said to them that you were going to die tomorrow and increase in doing good deeds, they were not able because of what already they had strove and to the best of their ability to increase in the good and to do acts of obedience. So the Sheikh says, this was the case of the seller. They were individuals who used to free up their time, yatafarra. He said they will free up their time for reciting the Quran and pondering over the Quran. They will not let no worldly distractions that they were attached to pull them away from taking advantage, advantage of the moments of the month of Ramadan. So they will busy themselves with reciting the Quran. They will busy themselves with remembrance of Allah. They will busy themselves with doing righteous deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will cause severe khashyah, fear of Allah, what led to tense crying before the presence of Allah in their servitude and in their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here we are. Look at Imam al-Bukhari, the Sheikh said. Imam Bukhari, he used to make khatam. He used to finish the Quran every night of Ramadan. And then he would pray in the salat at night and finish it in the prayer. Because he wouldn't sleep at night. He would pray the whole night and would do khatam of the Quran in his salat, in the qiyam ulay, in the night prayer. Likewise, the, the tabi'een, Sa'id ibn Jubair, who was the student of Ibn Abbas, that he used to make khatam of the Quran in Ramadan every two nights. He would finish reading the whole Quran. He says this characteristics of our salaf became so prevalent that it even reached the rulers of the Muslims. The rulers used to have this type of striving in Ramadan. He said, Walid Abdul Malik, that the ruler from the Umayyad, that he used to finish the Quran and prayer every three nights of Ramadan. And they would have this zeal and servitude to Allah with tadabbur, with pondering and reflecting over as they recite it. And uh, for the translator addition for clarification point, tadabbur in reciting at night is when they will come across verses that talked about paradise, they would ask for it. They came across verses that talked about the punishment of hellfire, they would seek refuge from it. They came across things that encouraged towards goodness and taqwa, they would ask for it like this. This just shows one's reflection as the messenger of Allah used to do. And this is what he meant by tadabbur. Ibn, he said, Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was an individual in the month of Ramadan that when he, he would not break his fast and, with food, except that he would collect people from the masjid, from the poor and others, and bring them to his house and they would break fast with him. They would break fast with him every night of Ramadan. They, in this month, the Sheikh said, they will put intense better striving and efforts to do goodness in this month. For because of them fasting, he said, it will cause them and make them you hissul fakir wal masakin. They will feel the difficulty of starvation that the poor will go through. So they will strive when breaking a fast to feed others, especially the poor. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum was amongst the companions that would take advantage of this month. And they didn't see that fasting was just the abstaining from food and drinking one's desires. He said, no, it was deeper than that. That Umar ibn Khattab said, Laysa siyam, mina ta'ami wa sharabi wa shah wa faqad. That fasting is not you turning away from your food and you abstaining from your food and you're drinking your desires. But fasting is abstaining from backbiting, tail carrying, and sins. Naam. And he mentioned in this regard the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said, Man lam yada' qawl al-zur That whoever doesn't leave off false statements, lying statements, wal bi and acting upon them, falaysa lillahi hajit an tada'an an taraka ta'amahu wa sharaba That Allah has no need that that person leave off their food and their drink. Allah has no need that a person leave off food in his drink, food in his drink, 
when he's committing sins and listening to sins and watching sins and committing sin. And then the Sheikh Hafidullah says for this reason, the individual must leave off sariba, backbiting, meaning saying about your brother or sister that which they wouldn't be like to be said, that's true. And for avoid namima, tell carrying, spreading things to cause hatred and enmity between people. To leave off disobedience to Allah. It's not befitting that you're that you're you're fasting from food and drink, and your limbs are not fasting from sin and disobedience. He said the lesson in fasting is not tahdibun nafs an taami wa sharab. It's not disciplining the soul to stay away from food and drink and desire sexual desire. He said this is not the objective of the fast. The objectives of the fast is to obtain taqwa. Obedience to Allah and staying away from disobedience in every moments of your life. He says, unfortunately, what we see today will take place, and he referring to now will take place in the lands of the Muslims. And Allah knows best what take place in the lands of Kufu. He said, what take place where they make the Muslims programs on television, where they call seasonal programs during Ramadan, where they make Aflam and Habita, where they make these shows that are destructive and invalidate one's actions and deeds that destroys a person fast what they witness and watching in this month. Or he said, you will see Ahl Tijara, the people of business, businessmen and business owners. They will take advantage of the month of Ramadan to busy the Muslim woman with things provided for her to leave out from busying herself with ibadah and busying herself with remembrance of Allah, and busying herself with kira'at al-Qur'an, and reciting the Qur'an, and doing righteous deeds, to busying herself with the marketplace, and going out there to buy the things that they only could get in Ramadan. He says, this is a ghala. He said, this is wrong. He said, this is a se severe mistake that take place here in the Muslim land, and taking this, making mausum seasons of these types of activity that distract one from their servitude to the creator, of those of, of, of their creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says this month is the month of ijtihad, of striving hard to obtain taqwa. It is the month of obedience to Allah and staying away from sins and disobedience. For this reason, he said, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda. He said, marhab, that when Ramadan would come, he would say, marhaban. He says, welcome to the month of Ramadan. Welcome to the month of Ramadan. The month that purifies us from our sins and, dis and disobedience. That purifies us from sins and disobedience. He says, also, Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, the person or the human being, the one who makes his main concern what fills his belly, meaning fulfills his desire, that his value and his worth is only what come out of his backside. His value and his worth is only what come out of his backside, meaning the feces that come out when he used the bathroom. That's his value because his concern is his stomach. Not the concern of his hereafter, the concern of his taqwa, the concern of his relationship with Allah, the concern of his deen. He says that the cell of Rahimahullah, they knew the, uh, the goal of this month. What was the goal and objective of this month? The goal was to obtain the ability to cry before Allah with repentance and returning back to him and reflecting on your shortcomings that occurred before this month and during this month and returning back to Allah with striving hard in servitude and reciting of the Quran and studying the book of Allah and, 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 and feeding the poor and feeding people with your food, and doing all those righteous acts, and giving charity, and all that what he has mentioned, that this month is the opportunity to take advantage, and the Sheikh Hafidullah closed with that, and then he asked permission 
to leave because of him being long upon us. And he said he asked for pardoning from that. And at another time, inshallah, Tyler and Zah had told him he can leave. And he ended with this reminder. It was a tremendous reminder. We ask Allah Ta'ala and Yaja'ana Mina Ladina Yastamiruna al Kaula wa yet tabiruna ahsana. We ask Allah to make us of those, as Allah says in the Quran, who hears the statements of Allah and His Messenger, and they follow it in the most excellent of manners. Ula ikahumur rashidun, for they are the ones who are from the guided. Mahada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbi ajma'in wa salamu alaykum. Jazakumullah khairan, barakallahu fikum hafizakallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and to reward you for this wonderful translation. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, beloved brothers and sisters, we are very sorry for the late start of today's session. We had some technical issues. Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us today with the presence of our beloved Sheikh, Dr. Zaid Al Musallam, Dr. Abdullah Zaid Al Musallam, Hafizahullah Ta'ala. He is uh, one of the most senior students of Sheikh Muhammad Saleh Al Uthameen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. So, this was a very unique opportunity we had. Uh, a most senior student who himself in his own right, mashallah, is a scholar, alhamdulillah. He's also a professor at Al Qasim University in Qasim, in the city of Qasim, which is also the city of uh, our beloved Sheikh, uh, the Mujaddid of our time, and one of the uh, top scholars of our time, Sheikh Muhammad Saleh al Uthaymin, rahimahullah. What was the Sheikh's name again? Abdullah what? Abdullah Zaid Al-Musallam. What was the Sheikh's so, name, uh, uh, name again? Abdullah. What was the Sheikh's name again? Abdullah. Sheikh Abdullah Zaid Al Musallam. And uh, we also thank every single one of you uh, for patiently waiting for the start of the session. May Allah Azza wa reward you all. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that Allah places heavily on the scale of your good deeds, and uh, may Allah Azza wa uh, make you successful in this dunya and in the hereafter. Beloved brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we will continue to have live video lectures with our scholars, inshallah ta'ala, every Saturday and Sunday, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, we plan and we hope to continue this even after Ramadan, bi'ithnillah ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, next week we are planning to have a Sheikh, our beloved Sheikh, Sheikh Saleh al-Suhaymi, hafizahullah, and Sheikh Ali at wajari inshallah ta'ala. Uh, uh, and uh, following weeks, we will have uh, some more scholars, bi'ithnillah ta'ala. Please help us spread the word. Please like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Share the post with uh, your friends and family members uh, in alhamdulillah you all have i'm sure you all have unlimited text messaging services and you know unlimited calls so use this put it to a good cause and all you I, you mashallah you always put it to good cause so alhamdulillah spread the word send out text messages send out uh, make calls let other people know about this, uh, about this unique and golden opportunity to benefit from the scholars in Shah Ta'ala. And if you have any questions, uh, you may email us at albasira.org at gmail.com. Or if you have any question for the scholars, you can always post it at our forums. You go on our website, albasira.org, and you will see forums there, and you can post it in our forums. Jazakumullah khairan. And with this, we conclude our today's session. Wa ila liqa'in akhir. Nasta'udhukumullah. وفي امان الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته